The following episode is brought to you by Poison City Brewing, proud makers of Durban Poison Cannabis Lager, the beer that invites you to live your poison. Just looking at your career and how, how you're moving, yeah. like we, we've been having a conversation since we linked up today about how you grew up under, you know, like... The Yes, you know, very strict hand. <laughs> the, the German, German hand. hand. Yes, <laughs> you know, would you say Uguzi, that has sort of helped shape you into the woman that you are? Or would you say Uguzi, Mklampe, there are some things that are sort of cons when it comes to being raised like this? I was myself, actually, was also raised in uh, in quite a strict yeah. family. My parents are also very, like, they're churchgoers, like hectic, hectic churchgoers. Hectic churchgoers. They've got positions in the church and shit, and it's just you know how it goes, bro. Yeah, so, so when, uh, how, how did it sort of help shape you? Like, did it shape you to be the person that you are? Um, for the most part, I think it shaped me spiritually, um, because I don't know. For me, what I believe in and the spiritual journey that I've been in works for me, and it, it sustains me. It gives me a lot of stability and discipline in my life so I definitely say that my parents played a huge role in you know introducing me into the kind of spiritual beliefs that I have because they've also worked for me like they were they obviously you know how it is when they shove it down your throat and you like have to go and you it's Sunday wake up you know and I, I also hated it but then it it just it naturally came to me I was like okay at some stage in my life, and I was in high school, I was like, you know what, I'm making this decision to accept the spiritual journey, and I want to see if it works for me. And it it genuinely does work for me. Um, yeah, I just grew up around it, honestly. Grew up in church. Some of all my mwanba are even pastors. Um, they were worshippers. My grandparents were pastors. Um, my grandparents' sisters and brothers are also pastors. So I just, I naturally grew up around that environment. So it it did really shape me because it helped me make this the decision for myself. I didn't really, even though it was forced, but there came a time where I was like, okay, I'm deciding for myself now that I want to go along this journey. And it, it's helped me personally, you know. I think anyone who finds um, spiritual comfort um, and it helps them with being disciplined and it helps them emotionally and in whatever way that is positive, I think that's a good thing. And I think I've found my good thing. Does this mean you are going to take up a position, Klampe one day, Klampe Ube, like a pastor? Yo, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Why are you, why, do you uh, not feel like you're limiting no. yourself? Do you not feel like you could grow this into something bigger and reach you know, out to other people and influence no. them? You know what? Um, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> you know what? Um, I've actually prayed about this. And I think, I think, you know, because you never know with Nguru Nguru Ban, like yeah. it could shift anytime. Anything can happen. Right? Exactly. Um, I think what he's placed in my heart is what he may want for me. Or it, it, it's what he may want me to go through right now. Yeah. So... I think my purpose is to sing whatever I sing, try to touch people's hearts as much as I possibly can in the way that, I don't know, in that way, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a quipul pit <laughs> where I'm like, and I think Kunkulunkulu just, he just made sure that, because I'm, I'm, I'm not very good in, in like public speaking yeah. or preaching, I'm not very good at preaching at all. So I think he just gifted me with this voice. And mm. so I think he just wants me to go along with it. Yeah. And mm. how are you sort of using your voice to have a positive impact on your listeners and any mm. aspiring? I feel like it's... I keep touching on this whole thing of uh, like females because mm. I feel like it's very important that, especially in South Africa, I feel like more females could be coming up, more females could be yeah, doing what, you, what you're doing. So what are you doing when I get to nurture anyone in general, including those females who want to do what you want to do? Um, I feel like chasing the dream in itself is is a positive impact because yeah. 
as cliche as it, as it may sound, me chasing my dream is like telling another person like, yo, you can also do this. It's telling another female artist like, yo, you can do this. I feel. I also feel as though um, I'm not saying that my sound is too unorthodox. Like it's R and B, and R and B is not necessarily ideal in maybe the city we live in or the country we live in. Because I'm not gonna say it's not recognized. I mean, people like people are starting to get on the R and B wave, but the genres that are predominant in this country or even in like this province it's mainly gorm like deep house and you know and which are incredible genres um but i've chosen to you know chase r&b because you know like I, I always say in in interviews or in any conversation like r&b chose me like i've always resonated towards r&b i mean i was obsessed with joe scott when i was 10 years old like who who sings the way <laughs> at ten years, years old and actually feels what she's trying to say and it's it's the soulful element in it and who listens to Maze and Frankie Beverly at that age you know what I'm saying so in a sense it's like for females who want to pursue my genre go ahead and do it like if it if it's something that speaks to you go ahead if you're passionate about it go ahead like chase it so I think. I'm nurturing and I'm in, sort of inspiring. I'm full of inspiration because it's talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I I think that's that's what I'm leading on. Like you know, if you want to do a genre, even if it's a very unorthodox genre, go ahead and do it. I think Futsumuntu is a good example of this. Is even though it's not Umuntu Fazan, it's A1 Wolf. When he like first started, he did like what electro hip hop, nan nan nan. Yeah. Not a lot of people were on the wave, um, but eventually, you know, he inspired other people to do so. So I'm, I'm hoping to do the same. Would you ever experiment? Slamper, you mentioned it come there, and I automatically thought of another fellow artist, um, Uyashna, mm. who's recently had like a come track. Love Yashma. Yeah. She's recently released like e Gorm and stuff, and we don't really know her for doing e Gorm yeah. and all that. So, would you? Are there any possibilities of MJ Summers sort of, you know, experimenting? experimenting yeah. I don't want to say no. I want to safely say, um, right now, I don't see it happening because my heart is not there. My heart is genuinely not there. It's not within Deep House. It's not within anything because when I put pen to paper, it always feels right and it feels amazing when i write an r&b track like literally it soothes my soul it's like my chest <laughs> even my physical body like it even resonates with my physical body and i'll always want that amazing feeling like it's it's a feeling that is out of this world so and i found that when i try to you know experiment with other genres uh, the feeling is not necessarily the same and I can actually feel oh, it's okay I'm working and yeah. it feels forced like there's nothing natural about it so the minute it becomes natural then perhaps I'd be willing to explore it not to say that other females that explore other genres are you know wishy-washy or whatever I think overall music the music will speak for itself a good, a good song is a good song whether it be any genre, the music will always speak for itself. The creative process is unpredictable. You know, it's it's those factors. But for me, right now, I I honestly don't think I see in myself. But we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And obviously, when we were speaking before uh, the recording as well, you did mention mm-hmm. it would to my surprise, your age. And I was I was very shocked because you're still quite young, and I was even telling you, Witsi, you know, I was here thinking you're like, you know, you're way older than the age I that you. I can't believe you thought I was that older. You, <laughs> <laughs> I did. That's. I cannot believe. <laughs> and the crazy part is, I think it's as I told you, it's like, it's it's the way that you come across. It's your presence. It's how mature you are. It's how it's the mature content in your music. You know, how, how does that even happen, Witsi, at your young age? You know, you have such mature content and your your general presence and stuff. And you did mention to me as well, Luwuti, as artists, you go through the most. Yeah. And you go through certain experiences. So what yeah. would you say are these experiences, as much as you can touch on or as you're comfortable enough to share, Luwuti? What are these ex- experiences that you've been through that have sort of made you, you know, mm. 
come across, you know, more mature than what your age actually suggests? I think, um, cause mostly with uh, with R and B, it's it, yeah. I think I want to start there. I think mostly with R and B, cause R and B stands for rhythm and blues, right? So it could be any rhythm, and you could be singing about your blues. Although, um, and I'm very uh, sometimes I'm open about this. Would see some of my tracks, I don't directly relate to them. Like a friend will tell me a story and I'll write a song with as much passion as I can get. But at the end of the day, um, I obviously have experienced things that have forced me to grow up quite quickly, like any other human being. Um, like any other human being, I've experienced love lost, whether it be the end of a relationship, whether it be heartbreak, whether it just be a loved one dying. Um and yeah, I think I've just had to deal with a lot of death as well. But I've also ha- had to experience the excitement of love gained and, you know, being responsible in that sense. So maybe that's where the aura and the maturity <laughs> that you're getting, maybe that's where um it comes from, I think. I think it just comes from me really being inspired by rhythm and blues, me um, having experienced love lost, me having experienced, you know, gained love, uh, listening to other people's stories, you know, being surrounded by quite interesting characters and different. Because, like, literally, if you look at my friends, I have such a different sample space of friends. Some people are just like, how are you friends with this person? Or, this is your cousin? I'm like, yes, this is my cousin. And... Yeah, I think I've just spoken to those people. I've I've been around those people. I've lived with those people. And it's just a matter of human understanding, man. It's always about human understanding. There's always some sort of common ground, no matter how different you are with the person. So, yeah, I think the music and maybe the aura that you're absorbing, maybe that's where it comes from. It comes from. It's beautiful. It's, it's, yeah. it's really nice. Like, I want to link up... Uh, because uh, I've been like uh, like I've been saying as well, I've been listening to Ifongani like a lot. Thank you for listening. Yes, Thank and you, so you like you literally. I, I don't listen to R and B. Like yeah. I, I don't I don't restrict myself when it comes to like listening to to types of music. So okay. your your music sort of being R and B was my first time sort of being exposed to Indeganje oh. when it comes to a South African artist oh, okay. and all that there and. Um, you know that you got me like I, I was literally at gym listening to Ifungani. That's how. <laughs> that's how. Like that's the extent. I can just see you with the dumbbell. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. So they just. <laughs> you know it. You know it. You know it. And it's 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 it's, it's that's the extent. I've never heard of someone listening to R and B at gym. It's usually like some hardcore stuff, like <clears throat> like Fifty Cent or if it's up, then it's up. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. where my dogs at? <laughs> <laughs> Stop, drop, you know, like hardcore stuff. Yeah, yeah, boy. So, 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 like, I, I wanted to just familiarize myself with with you and 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 your your kind of content. It's not something that I do all the time, but I felt like, like I keep saying, it's yeah. MJ Summers. Come something on, has yeah. to be done, yeah, boy. So, so now the one thing that I did pick up with with this stuff, Sako, and I want to relate it now to your upbringing. Mm. In terms of your your coming from a conservative your, family, yes. Mm. But now, if you listen to the the content yeah. and what you're talking about, Bifunga and mm. some of the stuff that comes up, and then you look at your <laughs> upbringing, yeah, you know, there's there's a slight contrast. Yeah, there's, there's the not there. even slight. Yeah. I know there's a there's a big contrast. I know the type of artist that I am is quite the oxymoron. To yeah. Me. But to be honest, um, um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm very well aware of it. Um, for the most part, I think my family is just really happy for me, and they're excited, especially if they see me on Trace, and you know they see that I have interviews, like I'm doing an interview right now. As soon as I post it, they're just gonna be very excited. I think they've always had that happy, excited, supportive energy for for anyone in the family in general, which is something that I'm I'm fortunate for. Um, for, so, yeah, I think for the most part they're just so excited. Sometimes they don't even notice what is in the content. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm so serious. Like I don't think they even notice. I don't think it's not to say they're not supportive. 
I think they just listen because they're just like, wow. Yeah. Here is That's our child. Yes. They're just like, you know. So I don't think they, they pay attention to it. And even if they did pay attention to it, I think they'd be very, very supportive because they also listen to quite a lot of R&B. So I don't think it's a foreign concept, you know. And I think they know me personally yeah. as well. They know me personally. So whatever I sing about, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm selling a fake, like fake selling an experience because it does emote from an area. Like I said, it could relate to somebody else or somebody else's story. But yeah, I think they're just so happy. They don't even notice the content. Mm. Like they don't even. And even if they do one day, there's nothing they'll do. Like they'll just be like, we'll keep supporting you. Unconditionally. Yeah. It's yeah. not it's not a matter it would say, uh yo you know, you could be this innocent girl in front of their eyes and then judging from the stuff that you talk about in your nah, music, it's like bro. I remember I remember this one time an aunt of mine, I won't say her name. Shut up. But there was <laughs> I won't say her name. <laughs> this aunt of mine, um, we were cooking in the kitchen because there was like a Numgumbi kind of vibe, like I and so I go to the kitchen and she pulls me aside because my ex's music, you've watched the ex's music yes, video, right? Yes, I have. So there's, there's a boy and there's, you know, the story of a boy and whatever. So me and the boy are holding hands and yeah, just to, <laughs> just to explain it briefly. So she pulls me aside in the kitchen and she's like, hey, boy, what does your dad say in Jaina? When I'm and I'm yes, just yes. like, and I was so mad. I was so mad. I literally went to my mom. I'm like, Ma, umzulu so entertaining. And then I literally told on her. She's like, ah, she's horrible. I think I was a woman. Literally. Oh, damn. <laughs> so she was like, she literally reprimanded her. She's like, no, like, it's a good thing. She's on TV. I think it's it's good that she's pursuing her dream. At the end of the day, we know that my daughter doesn't randomly go around holding up a fan. Yeah. It's literally just for a music video. We we also used to watch music videos and performances and stuff like that. Cause luckily they know they genuinely know music. So yeah, it was it was a, a thing like that. Like and like I always say, in as much as they're conservative, I I think they're very supportive. It might be hard on them, but they try to be as supportive as possible. So when you when you're sitting at home, it's you. It's 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 your folks, and. Yeah, uh, music video exos comes on or call an hour where you are holding I've hands. I've never with the... seen my music video. Yeah. Like randomly. Yeah. Have like, they seen it though? Have you like ever watched it? They've seen with it. Them? Like a lot a lot of people have seen it. My parents have seen it. Yeah. I've never had like the fortune of actually just sitting down like, Hey, let me open trace randomly and yeah. I've never yeah. you know, but yeah. people have seen it. Yeah, but, but I think they were still proud. Like I said, they're just yeah, so excited. They, they, they're just like, ah, you're on TV. They're literally just like, ah, you're on TV. Mm. So I don't really think they pay attention to the content in that way. Yeah, I yeah. genuinely don't. I know. This is incredible. Like, it's nice to be getting some insights now on you and mm. and all that there. For anyone who's listening to this, you've got MJ Summers. I should have done that right in the beginning. But it's been a really dope chat. And obviously now... I want us to talk about the Onali Fungani mind. Like, focus a bit more on that there. It's it's a really good release. Seven tracks on there. Um, and tell me about uh, your producer. Because uh, the one constant, he's the one constant that I, I noticed in the beats. You know, he's got his tag there. What is it? Na- Nacos or it's Narcos. Narcos. Yeah, it's Narcos. Perfect. Tell me how you guys met and, and how, how it came to be. With, so he's the, the producer. And is that you that's saying the tag? Why does everyone ask me? <laughs> Why does everyone ask it me that? Like you, sort of. Um. Okay. Yeah. It is me doing the tag. It yeah. is me. I, I did. I honestly. I. I didn't think it would be. It would be that obvious. But how Narcos and I met. So there's this really in, incredible rapper. His name is Figs. Yeah. So um, Figs saw me one night at one Wednesday, Wine Wednesday. And, uh, you know, I was performing and whatever. And we also go to the same school. Okay. So I didn't know Figs at the time. And, you know, I'm I'm with my girls. And anybody that, that knows Figs, Figs is, like, energetic. And he's just quite a, a confident dude. So I'm standing outside with my girls. And I'm waiting for my dad to come pick me up. And next thing I know, I, saw, I see this really tall gentleman. He's running, like, down the street. He's like, yo, what go on, ladies? You know, <laughs> it's like, really... 
And then he says, yo, I saw you performing. Yo, I was mind blown. Let's hit the studio. I'm like, okay, you want to hit the studio with me? At the time, no one was le- really collaborating with me because yeah. like, I didn't really have like a heavy profile. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you want to collab with me? He's like, hell yeah, I want to collab with you. I was like, okay, cool. So um, we end up going to Narcos' studio. Mm-hmm. And then he says, yeah, this is my producer, Narcos. Me and Narcos immediately hit it off. I don't know why, but we just, we really gelled. And from that point on, he's like, no, I really want to help you with your music. I'm like, really? You know, he's like, yeah. You know, I'm like, well, I've always wanted to release a project, you know. I don't want to be like one of those artists that are constantly releasing singles and yeah. single after single. I, I really want to give people good material. He's like, okay, cool. And then I, I also admit to him, but I still have to grow with my sound. Because before that, um, I'd only done a song with, an incredible producer named Chulu Sound, an incredible deep house producer, and he did the R&B track for me. So I told him, you know, I've only worked with Chulu Sound, and he's like, okay, no, it's cool. Let let's see where we can take this. Let's, you know, pump up your vocals. Let's see what your vocals prefer and stuff. And so Narcos and I ended up being really co- really cool through Figs, and we recorded a bunch of songs through recording a bunch of songs. I released I'm That Girl, which was also produced by Narcos. And to be quite honest, he was like one of the, besides Julie Sound, he was literally the only producer that believed in me. Because whenever, you know, you try to reach out, it's like, I'm not really trying to work with someone who doesn't really have a heavy profile like that. Yeah, you yeah. know, I don't really know yeah, if the tape. It's not even like... I th- I think I think cuz like how we were saying before yeah. you started recording yeah. it's it's only practical for any person in business to take an option that doesn't require too much risk management. Yeah. Right. So I was like okay so Narcos believed in me. At that time I I, was, I think I was also under really crappy management like I'm not even going to lie. So we started recording and we recorded for like a year. Like we recorded a bunch of songs, different sounds, different R&B sounds, you know, like 2000s R&B, you know. Then eventually I, I discovered what I'm comfortable with, backing vocals. It came to a point where it literally only took me 30 minutes to finish a song. And then, yeah, bam, that's how Fungani came about. And Narcos was just like, yeah, this is it. You're going to do it. I believe in you. Don't worry. You stop stressing. And now I'm, I'm on like what 30k streams, yeah, yeah. on iTunes. Yeah, and I was like, no, cause dude, we really did it, and you really, really believed in me. So, yeah, like shout out to Narcos. I, I always, I always tell him that you know I appreciate him and stuff. And he, he still sends me music till this day. He told me how to record myself and so on and so forth. So yeah, Narcos made Narcos. this beat. I, I like, like it. it. Oh. <laughs> Nothing better. Like, I you like just, it. You just There's know. Nothing. You just know. You just know. Ah, the track. It's a swag on you. I don't mind. After and after, that and literally after that track, I think I was what? I think I was on about 15k yeah. at the time. I'm seeing people tweeting. Narcos made this beat. I like. <laughs> I I'm like. <laughs> like there were so many tweets. Yeah. So many tweets. But. Yeah, you know, shout out to Narcos. Shout out yeah, to Narcos. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Yo, that's incredible, hey, how yeah. this came about. And I even remember, I think you even tweeted, what's he, how long did it take to get to 10K? Was it a week or four weeks, you said, yeah, in your was, tweets? It was, it was very it was quick. Three. Right? It was quite, It was less than a month. Yeah. I was like, guys, is this me? Yeah. <laughs> I was so shocked. I was legit, like, so shocked. But thank, thank God for Narcos, you know, Yeah. for believing in me keeping the sound alive and and everything like like for you we we obviously still on the tape but just as a side note like for you when when you when you notice to the table this track is reaching so many people yeah. you know how did that sort of make you feel with you that moment hit a 10k i actually couldn't believe it you know you know the one thing about me is i i can't be excited in the moment mm. i'm always so shocked and i'm always so calm yeah. i was like what mm. this is happening and I wasn't excited about it until like what two days later, because I was like, guys, I always have delayed responses. Yeah. I don't know if that's like a trauma thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like it's really weird. But I always have delayed responses. So two days later, I was like, guys, this is really happening. Like this is really, really happening. And whenever I check the stats, they just they're going higher and higher. They don't stay stagnant. They're not like stationary or anything. They literally just go higher and higher and higher. 
Yeah. Why, why did you guys sort of decide on the X's to be the 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 hit single? How did you how did you pick that one to, to be the one? Because there's there's quite a lot of nice joints on on the tape, yeah. Um, in the words of Narcos, X's was given to me by God. <laughs> like he literally says that he's like, when <coughs> Narcos, yo Narcos, when he's high, I hope it's I'm just like because literally it was I always tell people it was more of a freestyle it was more of a freestyle then I wrote the verses because what happened it was it was an old instrumental like it was an instrumental he had given me months ago we had both forgotten about it this one time I was going through my phone because I just wanted to write I needed something therapeutic at, at the time so I come across this instru- this instrumental that he sent me like months ago and I'm like, yo, actually, this is really nice. And then the flow just comes naturally. And then I called him. I'm like, where are you, Upis Nam And he's like, no, I'm not busy. I'm like, yo, can you come through? I want to record. Like, come through with equipment. I just want to be in a comfortable space. Just you and I. He's like, okay, cool. Then he comes through. We record the song. And it came about that way. So he was like, yeah, this is the song. We actually had a debate first. And I actually still owe him money. Because cause there was a bet. I, I said people are going to like either O3 on Femme Ties yes. or When I'm Acting Up. And that's going to be the single with the star. You know the singles with the yes, star? Yes. Yeah. And he's like, no, it's going to be exes. I'm like, nah. So then there, there came a time before I released <clears throat> when I filmed the snippet of exes. Before I released, I'd planned, cause shout out to Tiny Films. He's my videographer. Also very supportive. Like he helps me out through it, through anything. So, with Tiny, I'd see him. So I get to Tiny Studio because we were supposed to film the snippet. And then I play the song I would have preferably liked to be the single and it was going to be Aura. We were there to film a snippet for Aura. <clears throat> and Tiny says, no, not this one, this one. I'm like, Tiny, for real? He's like, bro, trust me. Because he had already heard the EP because we we're, were planning on the visuals and everything, you know. So he's like, no, dude, this is a song. I'm like, no, guys, I, I, I think this is like, no, you're wrong. I'm like, okay, it, it's him, it's he. who's saying no? This, so, it, so we decided to film a snippet for exes. Then we released the snippet. When the snippet released, we all decided, it's okay, no, let it be the leading single. Be like it was, it was all coincidental. It just happened naturally. The song I, I had decided on was just. It's in the tape, but it's just, it's it's not even, like, one of the best. So, I think having genuine people around like that really helped me. So, they helped mm-hmm. me make the decision. So, so when you when you were writing this, um, you did say, Guti, you were just feeling inspired at that moment mm-hmm. and you wanted... It, the stuff that you, you've written about, Gui X, is, is, is it something that, is, that has happened maybe to you or some, some aspects of it? I think some aspects of it, because I think everyone's experienced that. So we'll see, look for it. Like, I think everyone's experienced it. So I was just like, oh, okay. But now people are saying that it sounds toxic, because it's like I'm entertaining the exes. Like, I have no control over who calls me. Like, why, why are you, why are you say, flipping out? I must say, Mina, from a guy's perspective, when I was listening to it, I sort of put myself in... In the homies' shoes, no, would and it felt it it it. I felt like in that situation, Nami, I'd be uncomfortable. I would be asking Guzi like, yes. "Who?" Yeah, well, but then yeah, you are telling me, ah, I don't pay attention to these niggas no, and all Nassi, that." Nassi, that Nassi, that makes me feel like, "Hey, well, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you know." <laughs> I was like, no, but MJ. <laughs> no, but if we're keeping it a buck, yeah. If the same thing was happening to me, like I'd probably have a crazier response. Would say, "Boo." Who's calling you? Nan, 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 nan. So, like so I said, were you trying to? Sorry, sorry to, to yeah, interrupt. Right. Were you, were, was this sort of like a? I don't like comparing because with MJ Summers, MJ Summers. Mm-hmm. But look at what um, ooh, Beyonce did with "If I Were a Boy" type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the roles are reversed. Yeah. W- was that sort of what was trying to to be portrayed here in your in your own way? You would say this is how. It sort of feels mean if you're telling me yeah. to stop worrying about exes calling. Yeah, I mean, hmm, that's quite an inst- an interesting way to look at it. Um, I don't think I had that in mind. I just wanted to tell 
a really relatable story. I wanted to I wanted it to be something funny. Excuse me, I wanted it to be something modern. So and it worked. And it worked. Like it's it's a good story. Like I will stop freak relax. Uh. Stop freaking out. <laughs> I, I could not relax, you know, when I was... When but I was at the same to... time, Nasib, you need to understand, because sometimes I have no control over who calls me and who's yeah. in my DMs and whatever. I don't know why they're calling right now. All I know is that you're my main thing. That's all I know. You, you, put, you put me on a pedestal. Exactly. Right. You put your nigga on a pedestal. That's out of your control. But the main point is I have no control. I don't know why they're... T- I don't know why they're calling me. Yeah. They they're mad because you're my next thing. Is is this uh, that part of it? Is this something that has happened to you before? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it has. It has. To you, or was it an ex calling you while you were in a relationship with someone, mm. or vice versa? It was a text. Um, but it was multiple texts. I don't know. I don't know. The what, homie was texting you. Yes, obviously. Okay. I never even entertained it. To be honest, I never entertained it. Cause. For me, for me, I have this thing of leaving my phone around, yeah. and I don't know. Because you've got nothing shady exactly, going on. Exactly, like yeah. I have nothing. I'm, I'm the in, same. Yeah. In general, yeah. like in general, it, even if I'm in a relationship, like in general, I'm just talking in general. Mm. Even in front of my parents, I leave my phone. Fo- like, yeah. so I left my phone, and this person went through my phone, and there was I never deleted the text messages or anything because I didn't think anything of it. I was just like. Ugh whatever yeah. there's a time where like this guy was texting me he's like oh you know i heard you you know got a man now nah, 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 me. <laughs> you know i had this this and planned out so, okay like let me like let me talk to you let me take you out i was literally like no straight up yes i was like no and i i said some quite inappropriate things quite vulgar things to shoo him off actually just be like no like this is really disrespectful like if off like don't talk to me like you know i have a boyfriend nah, 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 nah. don't don't be blowing up my phone don't don't do that you know and the the dude who was on the pedestal saw the <laughs> saw the me- the messages and still he flipped out i was like why oh, are you freaking out yeah. but the funny thing is this happened when like in 2017 yeah yeah that was like 2016 2017 but I still wrote about it in what 2019. Yeah. Cause like it wasn't it wasn't that deep for me. But I don't think, uh, guys. I don't, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, I was just trying to convey a a relatable song. Cause I'm sure by Ning Abantu who have went through that. But since you asked, oh, <laughs> have I been through that? Yes, I have. Yeah. But I don't think I was necessarily thinking about it i just wanted to convey a relatable message because i'm sure now you've been through who's this why is she on your phone <laughs> no actually i are I, you serious <laughs> are you... not that i remember in, in recent yeah, like, times you like... currently currently not that i remember no, like in your past. Not now. i'll have to, to to look back i'll have to go research um obviously in in within <laughs> the Yo, within the <laughs> So, so like, also, like, in, in that track there, it's it's obviously, um, now I put I'm home to those who hold me on the pedestal. I'm jelly with you. This was this had to come up. I wanted to bring this up. Um, and obviously, the part where, and you actually explained before we recorded, uh, where some of the elements of your stuff actually comes from, and that it's from the R&B side. What was going through your mind when you when you dropped that line? Um, I, I can't quote it word for word, but it was it was something along the lines of, uh, "Come here, let me sit on your face, wow, show you guys. how good it tastes." Guys, I feel like wow. Well, I think that's an iconic line. A lot. Of, I'm not saying I'm not saying that I have like a lot of fans or anything, but when people see me it's like ah and then and then and then i know already <laughs> like this <laughs> guys yo especially like some of my friends whether it be my homies like my guy friends they're just like hey when so tall on people's face or so tall people's face <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> like it could be anywhere like ah come, mj summers come here let me sit on your face Gosh. just like guys honestly i think that was inspired by i think it was a cardi b song you know, I, I obviously 
you know, wanted it to be a bit sensual and, you know, something to listen to, something really, really chilled. So I thought, hey, why not throw in a controversial line? And you know, I'm a writer. I think I'm, I think I'm good at writing. That's the one thing. I, I am really, really proud of myself. So I think I'm good at writing. I think I'm good at relating. And I, could, I think I'm good at conveying good messages. And especially, you know, when women listen to these kind of songs, they're like, okay, girl, talk your shit. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, okay. So I just, I don't know. I just wanted that really fun vibe. Yeah, I just wanted it to be fun. Mm. You know, a lot of people think some of my lines come from like a deep place. Da-da. And it's like this profound, I don't know, guys, like sometimes, I'm sorry, I don't have interesting stories. Sometimes it just comes to me. Baby boy, I swear they just my exes. I don't know why they text me right now They just like cause you're my next thing Shine brighter than the lightning I put you on a pedestal They just my exes I don't know why they call me right now They just like cause you're my next thing Shine brighter than the lightning You're exciting I try to show ya You mentioned before we started as well, Uguti, you recently moved from Taiti. As our homies like to say, Brit. Yeah, so it's Taiti. Shout out, shout out. Shout out to uh, so you used to live in Taiti and then now you live in Westville, hey? So it's like all, it's all adjacent. It's all adjacent, hey? You're moving within the same land. Right. So, so how was that change from, from Ito to And actual fact, let's yeah. take it right from the beginning. You told me it was first in Laz. Yeah. And then to Ito And then. And then Westville. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, now that I'm a Westville <laughs> chapter, um, John, why are you laughing? Sorry, sorry. Come on, Yako. Sorry, 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 Karen. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Wait, I'm kidding, yo. I'm kidding. Lord knows I'm just messing around. <laughs> um, yeah, like when I, when I was younger, I lived in Lazi. Then we moved to Edodi. Then I'd visit my grandmother back and forth. I still do, in Lazi. Um, it was just a matter of my parents moving themselves up in life. So they, they worked really hard. Then we lived at Toti, um, worked harder. Now we live in Wiesville. Now that's solid. And obviously we've got we've got to manage Ayakolana with us now, who's yeah. just joined us. Um, and yes, yes, shout out, shout out, shout out. Literally one of the most hardworking women I know, guys. Can you say we'll fight? <laughs> <laughs> So, so when so when I uh, enjoy any experience, yeah, cool. Well, let me ask manager, how's your experience working with the MJ? Must I really say? <laughs> Be as say honest as you, you can. You can say anything. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Get you. So no, it's been great. Um, I think MJ is an artist, just like every other artist. But one thing I can say about her that uh, sets her apart from other people, right, is that. Like she has a big heart and she's honest. You know, some some artists, right? You want to get into an agreement with them, and you're just like, I want a transparent person, like a person that I can just become best friends with. You know, because not just passing by and then MJ at some point is gonna find a better manager or a bigger manager, or if like AKA's manager comes up to her and is like, I see you big potential in you and I want to manage you just let you let go of your manager and let me take you far right and then if it was someone else then they'd take up that opportunity because it's a big opportunity to them but with MJ I think she's solid to the point where she'd never do that to me mm. there's too many ifs and maybes and there's too many unpredictable things I need to think about whereas if I'm working hard with someone from the ground up I know that we're getting on our grind because we, at the end of the day, we both need to eat. So, so now with you, like you mentioned, this is probably the second time that you're mentioning your band. Is it sort of like a band with that are fans of your music, like the studio work that we got to listen to on Ifungani? So is that like a, what can I say? Example, when you're performing live, is that the sort of vibe that you go for? A band uh, that you've got playing with? Because you did mention which you got to pay the, the, the people in the band and all that. Or is it more of like a backing track and then you just lace the vocals? What's your, your live setup like for Um, Always live band. Okay. Always, always live band. Um, I actually started performing with the live band before I even got into the studio. Nice. Before I even started recording. So I've always you know liked the live band experience i've i've never used a backing a, a back was it a backing track 
is it an instrumental i've never used it um i don't think i will because it's not something that i'm used to and i'm personally afraid because i'm gonna flop it you know i think other artists do it so well and i think i do the live band thing really good and i'm i'm proud of it so i'm gonna stick to my niche so that's just how it is i've always it's always a live band. So when it comes to your band and getting them together, is it always the same set of artists or do you sort of look for different musicians each time? How do you get your band together? Sometimes um, it's usually the same group of people, but I alternate between them. So maybe this week this bass guitarist is going to play or that week that bass guitarist is going to play or maybe that pianist is going to play. Like it, it really differs, but it's it's still the same group of people, to be quite honest. Yo, and, yeah. since, and since obviously there's been lockdown, how have you sort of gone about, you obviously can't perform live yeah. and all that. So so what have you done to sort of make up and bridge the gap between physically interacting with your fans? Um, It's mainly just radio interviews. <laughs> like, No, but seriously, it's mainly radio interviews, um, social media. I'm very active on social media. Like, someone will tag me or mention me, and I'll be like, oh, thank you, you know. So I try to interact with them through social media. Um, Really, there's lockdown, COVID. There's not really that many live performances. So, um, but we, we still have some things cooking. So I think we definitely have some things cooking. So I think people should look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in terms of interaction. Hmm. Right, it's going to be sick, bro. I'm, are you going to come? If I invite yeah, you, are you going to come? Yeah, of course, of course. Why wouldn't I come? <laughs> no. Actually, yeah, actually, you're right. What am I coming to? Yeah, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, but not now. I'm not announcing it now. Uh-uh. You can't announce it now. It can be like an exclusive, guys. Come on. Give us something to take exclusive. home. Give yes. us something to take home, I agree. Bro. Nah. <laughs> La Leila, La Leila, your manager, your manager said it, so you gotta do it. You are bound. What's this big surprise? What's this big surprise? Break it out and slash underground. Hi, bro, guys, what's the big surprise? (laughs) Manager, please. I'll do it for MJ since she can't do it. MJ is officially going on tour. You, you, you. Can you imagine? And she doesn't want to say it. I don't know why she doesn't want to say it. Because oh, it's wait, going wait, to happen. Tour happening. When is this tour happening, guys? Okay, we can't say the exact date, okay. right? Because of lockdown. Yeah, obviously. yeah. But now we're telling you guys that she's going on a Fungani tour. And it's going to happen in three of the cities. All of them, actually. Cape Town, Johannesburg, and Durban. Yeah, we're definitely, definitely going to have a tour. Um, we just need to plan it out, obviously, according to lockdown and whatever. But we can't say the exact dates. Like Kanisa said yeah. So yeah Damn are you excited It's your first tour So Nigga I am nervous <laughs> like, I am, But I'm excited You know I always drive When I'm nervous yes. I always always drive When I'm nervous I think the nerves Are just telling me That you know I'm still alive I'm still there I'm here I cannot wait For this tour Like it, sound, it really sounds Like it's going to be Something special And <laughs> <laughs> um yeah obviously 2021 what are the besides the tour we've got the tour that's coming up uh if Ungani is doing really well are you going to be releasing any new music what are the plans for for the rest of this year um absolutely i'm gonna i'm gonna be releasing new music um i haven't really decided if it's going to be a project or an album or just a single but people can definitely look forward to new music yeah. absolutely without a doubt you're going to get music can we expect sort of like similar vibes to what you've got in Ifungani, the, the general structure, how you structure the tracks, how they sound and all that was something know. different? I don't know, y'all. Brace your ears. <laughs> Brace your ears. I don't know. We'll just we'll just have to wait and see. No, but seriously, you're gonna have to wait and see, you know, the creative process is unpredictable. Yeah. I haven't yet decided what I'm gonna put out there as yet. So yeah. But definitely we're gonna put something out. So do do you have anything to say in Plumper to, to, to people who've been following you for, for the longest time and have been supporting you? Any message that goes out to them? Um, I want to say peace and love to all of you guys. Peace and love to your friends and your families. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to even listen to me. So, yeah, like that that alone makes me the happiest girl in the world like even when i wake up and i check the stats and i see that they're rising it's because of you guys um i obviously don't know you know how people have a name for their fan base 
me i don't have a name <laughs> so i don't know but thank you thank you so much to you guys um for even considering me as an artist like every time people tell me i'm your fan i'm like oh my gosh i'm the one who gets excited so um yeah just thank you for being my fans and listening to my music really really i really really appreciate it if i could give you guys the world or a piece of the world i would so, so, yeah. so, 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 shout outs any shout, shout outs you want to give outs, shout out shout out to my family Shout out to Kanyisa, shout out to all my friends, and shout out to Sludge Underground, shout out to Nasipi, shout out to Andile, who's not here. So, yeah, thank you, thank you for having me, guys. Like, really, really, thank you so much. Where can people get in touch with you on social media if they want to reach out? Um, on social media, on Instagram, I am mj.summersx, on Twitter, I'm mj underscore summers x um if people want to book me or anything please contact my manager kanisa bomoy um at k bomoy at gmail.com all right sick and uh obviously closing out what track of yours can we what's your favorite track of yours oh yeah i thought we can close but out people with people don't like the track that i like hey <laughs> <laughs> people don't like the track that i like that's the thing yeah. so i'm gonna let you soothe it out any track that you prefer Damn. i'm a fan of ilo e- Fungani, like the and it's two parts. You split it up into Fungani, and then oh, yo 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 yo, dude, like it beats your corner and the way you went in on it, your mesh. Oh, shout out, you, shout out, shout you. out. So we're gonna oh, play with that. I don't know what I was doing. What? <laughs> I don't know what I was doing, guys. Honestly, I was like, okay. Last ones. I was just thinking. I was like, okay, but like, it, it's an honest song. It's about my aunt Sufungan. Like, she was one of the few people that were like, no, do this, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do school, cool. But you need to pursue music. Okay. So I was like, okay, cool. So it's like a tribute. Yeah, it's okay. definitely, definitely a tribute. And I'm hoping that I'm not that I'm hoping. I know that the EP and like the project will be around forever, just like her memory will be around forever, even when I'm gone. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I feel like there's no better way to close it out than with that. So, yeah, we're going to be closing out with Tufungani. And, yeah, catch the episode on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud as well, Sludge Underground Podcast, and on social media, on Instagram, at Sludge Underground, on Facebook, at Sludge Underground, on Twitter, at Sludge 031. As for myself, it's at Sludge 031. And, yeah, guys, it's been MJ Summers. Thank you again. Now we can so thank you for being here. Yeah, guys, spread love. Until next time, it's bye for now.